He's able to live a life that I thought I'd never be able to live because of how much debt he was in two years ago or three years ago. So what are we saying and what is the conclusion of everything that we said outside of the burr and myrrh? Okay. The conclusion that we're making, ladies and gentlemen, is that everything you do, whether you like it or not, whether you think that love is attached to it or not, is a business decision. Don't matter how you feel. It don't matter how you project from it. It don't matter how much you in love and all that other type of stuff. Let's be clear. We're better together, working together successfully. That don't mean being no toxic situation with nobody or whatever. But if you're going to be land with her, you might as well get the benefits that come along with it. And it ain't just tax benefits like some of these ignorant buffoons out here is talking about. We're not just talking about tax benefits. We're talking about benefits all the way across the board. You better together than you are apart. And people that think that they can live in a silo, and you can. You can live in a silo and become successful. But all I'm saying is, please don't be out here being stupid and then not getting the benefits that come along with it. Everything you do is a business decision. And I found this article to be very, very interesting to be very, very interesting. I found this article to be absolutely fascinating because it breaks down the dynamics of one of the benefits of marriage that people often overlook. And it's not specifically to this issue in itself, but it's the fact that there are so many benefits that come along with marriage, which was one of the reasons why I always ask somebody when people always say, you know what? It ain't no benefit to marriage. And I say, then why is gay couples fighting to be recognized by the state if the only thing that matters is how you feel? I'm curious. Why did they take this fight all the way to the White House and then Obama was like, I got your back, fam. Why was it so important for them to fight for that and be recognized by the states legally if there was no benefit to it? So let's dive into this article because it kind of intersects what it is that I talk about from a financial perspective, especially as it relates to student loans and debt and education and being career driven in relationships. I do recognize that most people do not want to be alone. And so it's important for you to be able to thrive in a setting that makes you feel good as well as benefits you financially, your ability to even raise a child. Right. They have a much greater chance of being successful, being raised in a two parent, successfully married household, less likely to go to jail, less likely to have dependency issues, more likely to be successful when it comes to college and their careers. They have that stability and they're able to glean from both the father and the mother. They need their father and their mothers in their lives and to have them in a household 24 hours a day, seven days a week to nurture them is going to be working out in their best interest. But let's get into the article, right? It says, students that tie the knot to pay for the cost of college. Students that tie the knot to pay for the cost of college. Now, I know that y'all like, what the piss is you talking about, Anton? But we're going to dive into it. On his wedding day, Owen felt like he was marrying his best friend. He dressed for the occasion in slacks. A matching tie and vest. Bo picked out their rings. Both silver bands, one with a shiny rock on top. They went to the Orange County Magistrate. It was to be a low-key affair. Two close friends were witnesses. They took a few photos and celebrated in a restaurant after. Sounds like the typical wedding, right? They had fun with it, but they put enough effort into appearances to avoid suspicion about the marriage. Now, why would they want to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Conley and Menard are actually just friends. The rings were from Walmart. The outfits were from the thrift store. Photos set in front of a dumpster, and the meal was at McDonald's after the 8 a.m. ceremony on a Monday. They didn't get married for love. They got married for money. Ooh-wee. I know that's going to set some of y'all off. They didn't get married for love. They got married for money. I'm going to need y'all to hit a like for the YouTube algorithm also. All right. They didn't get married for love. They got married for money. <laughs> <coughs> they said, listen, we see the business proposition that comes along with this and we're going to break it down, ladies and gentlemen. All right. 
in order to qualify for federal financial aid and afford tuition, the two UNC Chapel Hill students devised a workaround to eligibility requirements. They did what rich people do every single day, ladies and gentlemen. They say, listen, we see that there's a tax code. We see that if I only operate in my silo, then I won't get all of the benefits that come along with opening up a business. I won't get all of the benefits that comes to contributing to my 401k and letting my money grow compound interest tax free. I don't know what a 1031 exchange is, but I want to keep most of the money in my pocket so I don't have to pay capital gains taxes. They took the same mindset and approach and they said, you know what, though? I'm having problems and issues I can't solve for. Most of y'all that make $100,000 a year, you know what you're going to wind up taking home after taxes for state, federal, FICA, Social Security, all of these different things? That ain't even including how much you're paying for health care coverage. $67,000 a year on average. $33,000. Listen, I'm a C student, but I know how to add when it comes to my money. $33,000 of your money is going to Uncle Sam. He said, I want my one third family. Middle class is the one that pay all of the taxes. Let's continue. They devised the workaround to get around the eligibility requirements. For some undergraduates, receiving financial aid for being married is extra income while their parents still support them. Meaning that when you fill out that FAFSA and you just graduated high school or whatever, they want to know how much your parents make in order to determine your eligibility and whether or not you're going to get that Pell Grant. They trying to determine exactly how much money you make in. What's your household income and are they going to contribute to your well-being? Y'all ever, listen, I know what being a college student is. I know when I graduated high school, my parents made just enough money to make sure that I didn't get all of the qualifications. But then at the same time, they didn't make enough money to be able to actually contribute financially to my education. So I had to man up and figure it out on my own. I said, let me go get me a job. Let me go get this work study. And then I was working in a library and I was working in a plant. I had to buy my own car. I had to get my own hustle up. And then I was reading books relentlessly because I hurry up and got all of my work done in my work study job that I was working in a library. And that's how I became so dedicated to all of the books that I read on a regular basis instead of watching TV. Your parents should have told you better, but we're going to get into it. For some undergraduates, receiving financial aid for being married is extra income while their parents still support them. For others, it's the difference between years of debt or a financially secure life. One month before he was supposed to start classes at UNC, Conley's parents sat him down for a talk. We not helping you financially anymore, they said. Ooh, what a knife to the heart. Let's continue. They did not have the financial know-how or save up for Conley's tuition. Hold on, let me stop there for a minute. When I told y'all on the Lapeef Network that $100,000 was not enough to be able to live and thrive with a family of four, y'all fought me. And then I started citing the data and statistics. The majority of the people only have, whether you retired or you just getting started, about $65,000 when they retire in their retirement accounts. Facts. Not nothing to debate. Facts. Most people are driving around without car insurance. Facts. Facts which is why the rates for people that do have car insurance are so high because we're subsidizing those that do not. Facts. When I say thriving, I'm saying that you have money put up for their tuition and they don't have to worry about taking out student loans when they get older. Because if that was the case, then we would not have the majority of people saying, I'm not paying my stuff back while we in this moratorium. And I'm looking for Biden to with the flick of a pen to forgive student loans, which he's not for most of y'all. Because it makes the government money in servicing the loan. When I say $100,000 is not enough to thrive for a family of four, I'm, I'm citing real life issues and statistics, okay? Let's get to it. <clears throat> they did not have the financial know-how to save up for Conley's tuition or the credit score to take out the loans. More loans. And their shame, this is what I talked about in the beginning of the show. Their shame 
kept them from telling Conley about it sooner. When his mom was his age, she had been cut off by her parents and paid her way through school. Why couldn't he do the same? She said, listen, I manned up. We raised you to be the man that you're supposed to be. I'm a mom and I was able to figure it out on my own. Listen, you're going to have to man up and do it on your own. We cutting you off. We can't help you. We can't we can't figure that out. That part. Of, listen, we're not taking on no school loans on your behalf. You're going to have to figure it out, son. Conley did not have money to pay tuition or the eligibility to receive financial aid. He took out private loans to pay for his first two years of tuition, which amounted to about thirty thousand dollars in debt. So he already started getting behind an eight ball and he said i'm not going to community college i need to go to unc chapel hill i'm gonna take out this 30 grand in debt for my first two years in which the community college would have given you the exact same credits you could have transferred them over look i'm gonna give the game while we talking about this you could have transferred them over and the majority of the classes that he took was the standard courses that everybody got to take before you even start to focus on whatever it is that you specialize in it all right <laughs> we all know what the finesse is. Even though his parents were not contributing any money to his education, he was still a dependent for the purposes of the free application for federal student age, which is a FAFSA, meaning his age was calculated based on how much money his parents could theoretically, theoretically, meaning that don't mean they're not taking into consideration what your car note is. They don't want to know what your financial bills are at the hospital. They not caring about your benefits. They don't care about none. They don't care about your mortgage. None of that. Theoretically, contribute to his education. The FAFSA is a form. <clears throat> we all know what a FAFSA is if you went to college. It determines your financial elig eligibility for aid. Um, so he when he was 19, he began researching ways to become more independent. You see what happens when you get forced into a corner? You start growling and you start biting your way up out of that mug. You figure out a way if that's what you really want to do. That's why I'm never in a space where people can tell me, oh, I didn't know or I didn't. You get done the things that's important to you. It was important for you to get on that, that fat path, F-A-P, and you had to get that. You make room. <laughs> you going to wake up early to get that up out of you early in the morning before you get on your day. I know who y'all are. I know who you are. I didn't dealt with too many people to not know who you are. All right. Um, that would mean his eligibility for A would be reviewed regardless of his parents' financial decision. All right. Fast for ask 10 questions. Do you have children? Blah, 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 blah. All right. He said the first two um, I definitely didn't want to do as an out of state student with higher tuition. Facts. You want to make sure that you stay in state. So you plan for that prior to becoming uh, college age, that's another finesse, all right? He struggled to pay tuition. The friends got married in 2018, right before the second semester of Conley's sophomore year. He said he filed for the fast for the next day and received a $5,000 Pell Grant. You know what it feel like to get 5K on your Pell Grant when you were struggling college student and you eating ramen noodles? Listen, a lot of people ain't even smart enough to really understand a lot of y'all get your Pell Grant and you go get fresh at the mall immediately or you over there in Cancun or you planning for spring break. You trying to figure out when the next when the next ones is coming out. Timberlands, you about to stunt on them. Some of y'all chicks, you spent the minimum amount on your books. You went to Chegg. Yeah, I remember Chegg. It's still around. You rented your books. You said, I'm not buying them because I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to go get that Louis Vuitton purse. You get done the things that's important to you. I know who y'all are. I done seen y'all walking around on campuses with a ton of student debt and them Louis Vuitton purses. We know what's really happening. He got that 5K, all right? Um, for the junior and senior years, Conley and Menard received enough aid to cover tuition as well as off-campus uh, off campus living expenses. They said, listen, if we get married, we can figure out how to pay for this education. When you put people in a certain type of, type of circumstance, they're going to figure that junk out. They're going to they get done what they need to get done. All right. Conley estimates that being married has saved him hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he's only a college student. Being married has already saved him hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
There are so many ways that you benefit as a result of being married. I, yes, I am still going to be pushing marriage on y'all. Y'all not going to be out here soying y'all royal oats. We had that conversation last night on my other channel. You're not going to be out here being messy, having kids out of wedlock, spreading STDs. Yeah, I, I know. I know the majority of y'all is working, walking around with the herp herp. I know the majority of y'all is working, rock, walking around with herpes. You don't, you just like skip it, forget it, whatever. Let's get it in. You're not gonna be out here just being messy. We not having that today. We not having it no more. Okay. Technically, there's nothing legally wrong with doing so," said UNC assistant professor, uh, law, professor of law Kate Ellen Gold. Her. <laughs> <coughs> Her work fo focuses on, among other to topics, civil rights and student debt. All right. Um, she said that if the students legitimately got married, then they qualify as independents. The reasons for the marriage has no bearing. The policy is clear. She argues for loosening the standards for those who qualify as independent student. Some families are large and can't afford tuition for each child. Some parents are accepting of their queer identifying children. Making the standard more stringent will harm more students rather than protecting them against fraud, okay? In spring 2017, their first year at UNC, Conley and Menard casually dated. They stopped talking when school ended, and that summer, Conley came out as a trans man. Listen, I did not read this whole story, so I am not vetting for it, but I'm showing you that when people look at things from a business decision, often at times they make the best decision in their interests. So this guy is a trans man, right? He is non-binary and uses gender, gender neutral pro, pronouns. I guess that's the they, sure, she, <laughs> I don't know what all of the pronouns are. They, sure, zer, ker, ber, mer. I don't know what they are. Well, what's a zer? What does zer mean? What's the difference between zer and mer? And Burr. Her. Ker. <laughs> Frankincense and Myrrh. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all got to listen. I don't know. Listen, everybody get these jokes. Everybody get these jokes. If, if y'all want to be equal across the board, then equally get these jokes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd give them on everybody. I give them on these chicks that's for the streets. I call them pavement walkers. I call the dudes deadbeats with herpes. And I'm going to call you Murr and Burr. Murr and Burr together. <laughs> oh, shoot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's continue with the article, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not get too distracted. <clears throat> uh, that fall, they reconnected as friends ever since they had moved into house <laughs> houses near each other. <laughs> houses near each other on Edward Street in Chapel Hill. They'd been hanging out every day, normally doing homework together. So they said, listen, we a couple. We just not going, mm. we not just going, we not going, mm. occur. Clifford said, occur. <laughs> I'm, idea of marriage <laughs> started as a <laughs> late night joke. Y'all should see them in the chat. They out of control. The chat is worse than me. The chat is worse than me. <laughs> Started as a late night joke in October 2017. <laughs> Wearing pajamas. Y'all got to be quiet over there. In October 20, 2017, they wearing pajamas. He was writing a paper for a gender and sexuality class about a high school. Why is he taking a gender sexuality class in college? How does that help you get to the bag? What is this degree in? We're not going to get it. All right. About a high school relationship that had been toxic. Bo was supportive and Conley felt like they were bonding. I wonder if he bust that down that night, though. They were bonding that night. They're not going to tell that part of the story, though. They had some sex. <clears throat> I believe it. <clears throat> they had some cigs. Cigs. <laughs> they got them on the conversation. <laughs> of their relationship, unpacking what had happened and move for, moving forward. They got on the top or, topic of their shared financial stress of having to pay for tuition. Owen thought about a Vice article he had read about undergraduates who had gotten married for financial aid, so they were making a smart business decision. 
What if we got married? They start Googling, so on and so forth, whatever. <clears throat> More than three billion in federal loans and work studies went to North Carolina high, higher education institutions for 18, 19, and 19, 20 award years. The department doesn't collect data about how many undergraduates receiving financial aid through FAFSA were married. Y'all are a mess. Y'all are <laughs> y'all are a mess. It did not go left quickly. They getting a <laughs> Kojak said they getting a bachelor's in bowling. <laughs> and bowling. <sighs> um, y'all get the point. Y'all get the point, right? So let's get to the, towards the end of the article. Conley said neither half of the couple regrets getting married and the difficult parts of the experience don't stop Conley from convincing other, other undergraduates to get married because Conley, four students he knows have done it and two more are considering it. He said those couples were already planning on getting married for romantic reasons, but they decide to do it sooner. Y'all be on me for getting married early. Do it sooner for the financial benefits Conley told them about. He cautions them, but encourages people to do it all the same to save money. Now, Conley has paid off a significant amount of the loans that he took out. He doesn't have to worry about how he will pay bills. He has a good credit score. He's looking into buying a house the next couple of years. He's able to live a life that I thought I'd never be able to live because of how much debt he was in two years ago or three years ago. So what are we saying and what is the conclusion of everything that we said outside of the Burr and Murr? Okay. The conclusion that we're making, ladies and gentlemen, is that everything you do, whether you like it or not, whether you think that love is attached to it or not, is a business decision. Don't matter how you feel. It don't matter how you project from it. It don't matter how much you in love and all that other type of stuff. Let's be clear. We're better together, working together successfully. That don't mean being no toxic situation with nobody or whatever. But if you're going to be land with her, you might as well get the benefits that come along with it. And it ain't just tax benefits like some of these ignorant buffoons out here is talking about. We're not just talking about tax benefits. We're talking about benefits all the way across the board. You better together than you are apart. And people that think that they can live in a silo. And you can, you can live in a silo and become successful. But all I'm saying is, please don't be out here being stupid and then not getting the benefits that come along with it. Everything you do is a business decision. Let me check back into what it was that we checked into to determine whether or not you guys have changed your mind any whatsoever in this poll. 